So you made it all the way back to the castle and decided you wanted to be a bad guy. And now you find out you gotta kill your waifu. And even if you manage to kill the waifu, you gotta deal with the grumpy old grandpa afterwards. And even if you manage to deal with him, he then gets a buttload of fire and he roasts your ass like a Thanksgiving turkey. And you just can't deal with it. Three health bars? That's not fair. This is bullshit. I know. I've been there. But it's alright. We're gonna get through this together. Welcome to the Get Good Guide for Emma and Ishin. Now before we jump into the moves, let's talk about what types of items you want for this fight. For Emma, you don't really need much. If you want, you can bring along the shuriken, and if you have plenty of gold, Sen Throw is great for building on posture, but ultimately, you're not going to really need anything for it. For Ishin, you're going to want to have Suzaku's Lotus Umbrella for Phase 2. This is going to allow you to counter out all that fiery bullshit, and make sure you don't get roasted. Aside from that, having Akko Sugar is going to be great here, since it's going to allow you to spank that waifu even harder, and lastly, you're going to want Itchy Munji Double. While I'm a big fan of running stuff like Senpo Leaping Kicks and High Monk for any time they do sweeps, Itchy Munji Double is going to let you get back your posture, and it's going to keep you alive in this fight. With the items done, it's time to talk about Perilous Attacks, and buckle up, because we got a bunch. So the first is Emma's Thrust. The timing for the thrust, you should be hitting the Kiri counter right around when the Kanji is disappearing off your screen. In addition to this, she also has a variation where she'll leap at you with it, but despite that, the timing is exactly the same. Press the Makiri counter right as the kanji disappears, and you should counter it every time. Next up, we have our grab attack, which similar to most grab attacks, just jump backwards as soon as the kanji starts disappearing, and you should avoid it. As for the sweep attack, you can jump and bounce off the head as per standard, or alternatively, you can use High Monk to get posture damage in, and while it is a great way to help build posture, ultimately I think it's overshadowed by the Itchy Munchy Double in this encounter. Now aside from the perilous attacks, you should also be aware of her Ashina Cross. The best way to handle this is running behind her as the animation starts and giving her a double bonk with Itchy Munji. As for Ishin, his initial moveset isn't that different from Emma's. He has a thrust which you can see here where it will knock you back first, and you can press Makiri to counter it after being knocked back. As for his quick thrust, you should press Makiri as soon as you see him start up the animation for it as the timing is much faster. He also has two perilous sweeps available, but I found the one from Sheath very inconsistent. As always, just leap over it if you see it coming. As for a second sweep, however, instead of leaping, we're going to circle around to the left and give him a good old-fashioned double block. Moving on to the grab, leap backwards, very similar to Emma's, although the timing for this is a little bit faster, so it's something to be aware of. Aside from the perilous attacks, Ishin has a couple other tricks up his sleeve, namely the one you just saw there. From a neutral stance, anytime you try to attack, he'll dodge and do a counterattack instead. This can cause you to take quite a bit of damage, especially if you're spamming R1. Because of this though, you know it's coming, so do a single swing and then prepare to deflect, and then from there, the tempo of the fight will continue. Moving into phase two, he'll start the fight with one mine, which will cause him to erupt all the areas in fire into giant fire pillars, and then do a multi-slash that can really mess you up if you don't block. The best way to avoid this is make sure you're standing where there is no fire, either on the snow or in between the flames, use the Suzaku umbrella, block the entire thing, and then counterattack after his final slash. Some of his previous abilities are also enchanted with fire now, as you can see here. Despite this, all three of these attacks are extremely easy to avoid, and can be dealt with by simply circling behind Ishin from the right side and giving him a good old-fashioned bonk on the head. So now that we've covered all the bases, it's time to pull it all together. The main tenets of this fight are going to be aggression and hitting it from behind. Very similar to the Genichiro and Lady Butterfly fight, you want to keep the constant pressure on your opponent. Don't let up. Make sure their posture stays as close to max as possible and get that death blow. So as for Emma, ideally you should only need to use one heal or zero for that matter, to take her out. Since Emma is essentially just a lighter, you know, weaker version of Ishin with one health bar, she's actually a decent practice to one, two, three, four. Keep close eye on the tempo of those deflects. The fourth hit is slightly delayed. You're going to want to focus on getting the first three, which are in a cadence, and then the fourth, which is delayed, to throw her off balance and get a large amount of posture gain. One, two, three, four.
Similar to Ishin, you can also circle behind pretty much all of her moves and give her the bonk. With the waifu dead, it's time for the big boy. You don't need to use Akko Sugar for Ishin, but you certainly can, and it's not necessarily going to hurt. Let's go ahead and pop one. Remember to circle that ability to the left, not to the right. Realized that a second too late, and that's why I jumped away there. Clash of the Blades is your song. Love this battle. And we could have taken him down already, but I want to show that a little bit more of this guy because that was way too easy right there. Not often you get in a tempo that long. You can see how I'm simply just walking behind him and getting my bonks off. Remember how he's always going to dodge that first hit when he's in a neutral stance. You can basically use that to bait him into a perfect deflect. If you can't get behind an Ashina across, just run out of range of it. I think that's enough of Phase 1. So as I mentioned, for Phase 2, go somewhere preferably with Snow or Corner, and just pull out your Umbrella. Now wait. After the Heavy R1, that's when we counter. Now the hardest part about this phase is making sure he doesn't get backed into a corner, because you want to be able to circle behind him. Circle and bonk. Circle and bonk. As long as you keep up this tenant and keep hitting it from the back, Ishin will fall with these. Keep in mind that you can use Suzaku to, to, uh, to block out a lot of these fiery attacks. If for some reason you don't think you're going to be able to dodge one, go ahead and block it. In addition to that, if you're going to heal, get back as far as you can like you saw right there. He has reads very similar to Genichiro, and if he sees you healing, he's going to rush in and try to get a free hit. Mine starts, pull out that umbrella. If you get burned, go ahead and just run away, get off a full heal. Honestly, wouldn't even worry about curing burn status. For the most part, it doesn't burn that bad. Uh, in general, I think poison is a much deadlier uh, thing to get afflicted with. If your posture is that high after that attack, feel free to back up, hold block to get it back, or alternatively, get out an Itchy Munji so that you can recover it that way. It's 
same as before, you can bait a deflect from the neutral stance. You can see I keep trying to lure him to the middle here, and that's because I don't want him in an area where I can't circle behind him. As I mentioned, if you do get hit, make sure to get some ample distance before trying to get off a heal. And keep in mind, you can actually move while the umbrella is out. Use this to your advantage. If you end up getting knocked near the flame, step away from it. There's no reason to just stand in the flame and let it happen. And if you've made it this far, and you still have some heals left, have some fun with it. Beat his ass, because I'm sure you died plenty to get here. Show him who the new boss is. Show him who has the stronger Ichimunji. Because one of the funnest things about bosses is once they have no health left, you can pretty much break them with a single attack. Pretty funny. Anyway, when you're done toying with them, go on up and get that death blow and finish things off. With Ishin down, you are now the most evil entity in all of Sengoku era Japan. So thanks for coming on by. Hopefully you guys also managed to join the Get Good Club. And moving up next, we'll be going down the other path and fighting Owl. So make sure to stay tuned, and we'll catch you guys soon with that.